This video is the product of the Functional Cranial Release Research Institute. For difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, visit functionalcranialrelease.com. Well, about four years ago, I noticed I started getting a slight tremor into my right hand. I was very, very mild and just like sloughed it off like nothing that was going on. Mm -hmm. Then over these last couple of years, I've noticed it's starting to spread into my leg and it's affecting, it's not really affecting me at work much, but a lot of my clients are starting to notice the shake in my hand. Nobody's noticed it really in my leg, but when I get stressed or nervous, the shake gets more pronounced and more noticeable. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started doing a lot of research online, trying to figure out what was going on. And But the symptoms, all the symptoms reporting to Parkinson's, I'm only 50. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I came to see Dr. John. That's why I'm here to see you. Mm -hmm. And it um, looks like I'm getting some good results already just after 24 hours. The speed of your eyes going from one direction yeah. to the other. And this is where I must have been pausing on the way there. So the, this this graph is showing the eyes slowing down. Slowing right down, here. okay. Uh -huh. so, this is, so this is before. And this is showing the, the right brain has a... A challenge with it with the omnipause and then this is after it's just almost perfect isn't it I, I've only seen a few of these graphs into me that looks that's a hundred percent better yeah then I came across this the function neurology and this this cranial release and it's the um, I guess first treatment I guess you could call it, that I've come across that shows success or, or promise anyway rather than drugs and surgery and everything else that goes along mm -hmm. so um, I'm basically my guinea pig mm -hmm. because I've been, you know, I got given this tremor shake or whatever it is or Parkinson's to try to find an answer for it. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the path I'm on right now. So that's led me to meet up with you from, I flew in from Australia to see you. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's something I'm very interested in following up. But mm -hmm. like I say, I'm, I'm my own guinea pig, so I want to see how, what kind of success I can, if I can get it under control and stop progression. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen here, there's going to be some, some good changes over the next few months. And um, start on the glutathione treatment plan. Nice. So, yeah. Well, one of, one of the things we, we spoke about was um, how these disruptions in eye movements are going to affect your ability to build something called collicular maps. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, oh, definitely. And so when, when people have, and, I, and I, I hate giving the diagnosis of Parkinson's, mm -hmm. but you know, these are certain areas of the brain that do become stressed out, and we talked about how mm -hmm. some some stresses that could be prior to the actual damage to the brain, mm -hmm. where you have dysfunction of mechanisms that share those those areas of the of the brain, and when they're not when they're not firing properly, it increases the demand in those neuronal pools such that you have a higher um, amount of oxidative mm -hmm. stress. So a lot of people that might be watching this video, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the internet and they can read about it and they know that oxidation, whereas like if you were to leave an apple out, you know, mm -hmm. it, it browns or you have rust that starts to you know, accumulate on metal. This is oxidation. And so in our body, as a byproduct of producing energy, we have smoke. It's like if you burn wood, you get smoke. So the smoke in your body is oxidation. Mm -hmm. So the more wood you burn, the more smoke you get. So in your brain, if you look at that at a, at a cellular level, if there's parts of the brain that have to work a lot more because they're trying to sync some things that just aren't, they're not, they're not balanced properly, so, so that there's more metabolic yeah. need for those, for those nerves it's not efficient. It's not an efficient system, so there's more energy expenditures, and therefore there's more smoke. Yeah. So if we don't have enough antioxidant, you know, and, and, and again, people watching this video, you know, the antioxidants are, are mainly in our foods, and generally people don't get enough of these antioxidants. So, you know, supplementing antioxidant, you know, um, but we talk about glutathione with a lot of these yeah. brain-based you know conditions because glutathione being the master antioxidant yeah. you know in, in the system it's a tier one antioxidant along with CoQ10 mm -hmm. and these the, this glutathione quenches that that smoke yeah okay okay you see and so and that's why what what we see in the office is 
using glutathione will actually see some improvement with this, but buffering this system on a long-term basis really can make some drastic improvements in the progression of things like Parkinson's and degenerative neurologic diseases mm -hmm. that we've got. But even better is if you can clean this stuff up so that you don't have to burn as much smoke. Yeah. You don't have to yeah. burn as much wood. You know, that, that makes a lot more sense. So, kind of backing up a little bit, we talked about the collicular maps and we talked about how we have to create these different grids mm -hmm. in, our, in our environment. So our body and our brain is, is, is syncing this information so that we know where things are in our environment and where our body is in relationship to that environment. And the part of the nervous system that dictates that is the superior colliculus. Mm -hmm. And we build these collicular maps based on retinotopic maps that are projected to the superior colliculus. That's what this was measuring. And not not directly, yeah. but we during the, this was also something that we looked at with your examination. Is we saw that your 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 eye movements were what's called dysmetric. So when I checked your you were looking at my nose and then you were looking at targets yeah. uh, with my thumb, particularly I could see that your eye was going to that target and then it wasn't quite getting there and there was catch-up saccades. There's little teeny micro saccades trying to find that target. Yeah, okay. So there's a dysmet dysmetric eye movement that I saw in the exam, but then we're also seeing findings with the saccadometer suggesting that, you know, there's, you know, omnipause intrusions and all these things are basically coordinated movements of the eyes which aren't allowing you to lock on to yeah. specific targets in your environment to then build your grids. Mm -hmm. And you get this expansion of these different somatotopic maps, which then can cause, and we had talked about on the chiropractic side, you get a lot of these people with different dystonic, yeah, yeah. you know, muscle spasms in the neck. And, 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 you know, we see so many of those people in a chiropractic setting. So even if you're not treating Parkinson's, to be able to look at some of these things just in a, in a, in a clinical setting where you're treating a lot of neck and back problems, yeah. huge. because. I hope you've enjoyed the material in this video. I want nothing more than to help as many people as I can. And you can help me do that by liking this video at the end and even sharing it with your Facebook friends. Because you never know if you might help me to change someone else's life. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. Functionalcranialrelease.com